one. By the way, um, um, housekeeping. So tomorrow we will learn at 7.30. Mm -hmm. um, Friday morning, we're gonna learn Friday morning, like eight o'clock or something like that. Like we normally do. Let me just, let me just hang on. Um, Shabbos, Saturday night, we'll learn at nine o'clock. Sunday, nine? yeah, 9 p.m. Sunday, we're going to learn at 5 p.m. Five, it's Arab Shavuos. So we're going to learn 5 p.m. We're not going to learn on Monday because Monday is Shavuos, but we'll learn Tuesday night at nine o'clock. That, that's the schedule for the next five days. Okay? Sounds good. Okay. All right. All right. So the Gemara asked the, the Tevila that we, the, the Chachami made that uh, before they go into the Azar, they have to do a Tevila. So the question is, we know that by normal Tevila, you can't have Chatzitza. You can't have something interspersed between the skin and the water. Well, what about this tefillah? Since this tefillah is only to remind him, it's, it's, he's not really Tomei. He said, according to Rabbi Yehuda, he does this tefillah to make him think about other tumas that he might have been exposed to. So the question is, is the din chatzitza chotzitz or enachotzitz? Omer lay. So they responded a very classic principle called the token Rabon and came to Raisa Tokun. Whenever Chazal make a mitzvah, they do it in the same way that the Torah does it. So if the Chachamim are going to demand a tefillah, it has all the various gedorim of a regular tefillah, and therefore you can't have anything chaitzitz. Okay. Or will I buy Rav Yosef? Bia b'mixer shma bia olam. When a person is Tomei and he goes into the base of Mikdash, so he's high of cards. What if he doesn't go all the way in? Let's say he just puts his hand in. That's called a Mikdash Bia. Is that called a Bia or not? The big, the thumb and the big toe of a Mitzorah will prove. Shehein Bia B'Mikdash. The Torah says that the Mitzorah has to stick his big toe in and, and he gets sprinkled there with whatever he gets sprinkled with to be metire him. And it's considered a bia, right? It's, and it's only a bia b'miktas. Metanya metzora tovel vo'ayme b'shar nikonor. He requires a tvila even for a mixes bia. So we have our answer. It's considered like a full bia. Okay, what about another question? Let's say there's a person who's tummy, so he can't walk into the Azara. But what if he makes a long knife? The animal's in the Azara. He doesn't have to do tevila because he'll stand outside of the Azara. He stuck his hand, the knife inside, and he'll shech with a long knife. Is he going to be potter from this tvila? Because he really didn't enter the Azor. Or since he's doing an action that's affecting something going on in the Azor, maybe it'll require tvila. And we learned that you can do that. The shrita would be kosher if you did it this way. But the question is does he need a tvila? Doesn't he transmit the tuma through the knife? Yeah, but a Kli doesn't transmit. The, the Kli only becomes a Rishon. Or if he's a Rishon, it only becomes a Shane. And the Kli doesn't have the capability of transferring oh. to the animal. Okay. So, Tiboy le ben zome, Tiboy le rabono, the Pli galed rabudo. We can ask this question both according to the Chachonim, who's Machmir, who requires a Tfila, and the Chacham who argued with Rabbi Yehuda that a regular person 
does not require tefillah. Tiboy le ben Zoyma, who was machmir, ad kanum chai ben Zoyma le gavoy. Ben Zoma required a tefillah if a person was going to go inside. But if the person's going to stand outside, avalavroilo, oidilmon, maybe you'll say asilim shuchi. No. Even though he's outside, because we're worried he might be drawn into the Azar to complete the act. Maybe Ben Zoma would require tefillah. And Tibor Rabban and the Pliga led Rabbi Yudu said that a regular person does not require tefillah before entering the Azar. That's because a regular person is not doing the Avoida. Maybe low, maybe he would require tefillah. So take on those, on that last Iboil who we have taken. The Mishnah said, Chomesh Tvilois Vasor Kiddushin Toivel. The coin God allows to go to the mikveh five times and wash his hands and feet ten times. Ton Rabbon. Chomesh Tvilois Vasor Kiddushin Toivel, coin God on the Kaddish Bobayom. The Kulan Bakodrim Vesa Parva. They're all in the mikveh that's in the Azara, in the Vesa Parva on the upstairs area. Chusmuri Shoyna Shaisa Bechola Gabi Sharamai. The first Tvila does not require it to be done. Vazar can be done the hall, which was done in the Sharamai, which was next to his office. The spring that provided water for this mikvah was 25 amas high. Was twenty three amas high. So the shaila is, how do they get that? This not. The shar, the gates were all twenty amas high, and eser amos verachbon eser amos ten amos wide. Chutz michel ulam except the entrance into the heichal. Which was twenty, which which was forty high. The Tanya Varachat Tzor B'mayim, the Kohen Gadol has to watch his body the main mikvah. And Kol Psaro to teach me Maim Shekol Guf Oile Bahem, how many volumes had to be in a mikvah? A mikvah that his whole body could go into because it said in the pasuk Kol Psaro, Kamahein. How much is this? Ama al ama berum shalosh amas. It's three square, three cubic amas, right? An ama times an ama times three amas, right? Because that's the if it was if it was a square, that's how much volume a person needs to to submerge his whole body. So remember, two feet. And Amos two feet, two by two is, is um, four times six, 24, 24 cubic feet. Veshir Chachami may make Varboim saw. That calculation volume is, is 40 saw. So it, it, it's 20 Amos high. Vahika Ama Tikr Va Ama Maziva. Then you have an Ama. Which is the width of the ceiling and an ama, which is the width of the sort of cement. And the tvila was on top of this gate. And again, you had to have three amas deep. So that's why initially the Gemara said it's 20 plus three. However, the Gemara says there's also the ama width of the ceiling and the cement. So the Gemara says, "Sharm de base hamidosh kivin de sheishin." You know, these gates were built out of marble, so it didn't need such a thick ticker. It was a mashu, the mashu avdelu. I vayeka hech mashu. Finally, it's twenty three in a mashu. Kivin de loy amso loy chashav le. So they called it twenty three. They rounded it down to twenty three. Parsu sodin shalboitz. After the kohen gadol got out of the mikvah, they surrounded him with a sheet of linen. 
And why why of linen? My special boys. That most of the avodot on Yom Kippur was in a linen white garment, not the big day zav that the coin Godel normal wore eight garments. Okay, so the Mishnah now is going to start going through the details from the morning to the to the end of the day on Yom Kippur. Korshat. So he took off his clothing that he was he was wearing his regular clothing. So he takes it off. Parshat. Yorad, he goes to the mikvah. The tova. All of an istabe. Got up. He, they give him a towel to dry himself off. Hevilo big day zav. They brought him the golden eight garments that a coin girdle normally wears. The lavash. And he put it on. The kiddush yadavaragla. Then he goes to the kior and he washes his hands and feet. So each time he takes clothing off, you need to wash your hands. Each time you put clothing on, you have to wash your hands. Now the tefillah, the first tefillah was after he took off his regular secular clothing. That didn't require, according to this Mishnah, a kiddush yadayim v'raglayim because it, 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 he came to the base of Adish regular his regular clothes. So that didn't require kiddush yadayim v'raglayim. That's why he only does a kiddush yadayim v'raglayim after putting on the big days off. So now you're wearing the Shmon of Godim. And the Koyen Godel, remember, every day these avodot were done by a regular Koyen. But a coin Godel can do any avoda any day if he wanted to. He could show up and do the avoda. We're going to see on Yom Kippur that any time the coin Godel does a regular avoda that was done on a regular day, he wore the big day zahav. When he's going to do the various avodot that are just on Yom Kippur, like going into the Kodesh Kadoshim, the Ketoyres, all of that, that was big day love on. So now he wears his big day zog. They brought him a sheep. So he shechts it. Now, he, really, he, he made a, a he, he started the shechita. The Gemara will explain. And somebody else was able to finish it. Not to weaken him. The coin Godel himself received the blood, Uzrako, and threw it on the outside Mizbeya, the Azara. Then, Nichnas Lahaktir Ktorish Shachar. After the Zrika Saddam of the Orla Satomid is when the Kohen would go into the Heichal on the Mizbeya Zohav and burn the Ktoris. After that, Lehetiv Azaneros. He would clean out the candles from the previous night. Here he said, by the way, that he said that the reason the Kohen lets the other guy do it so he can take Makabu the Dam. Therefore, it's what we, we talked about the last few days ago that he can't do both at one time. He can't be do the Shechita and the Kabbalah at the same time. The Kohen, that's why the other Kohen does the Shechita, finishes the Shechita, so he can have the, as the article says, freely the Kohen to receive the blood. But we thought we could maybe could do both of them. Sure, it seems to imply that he can't do both of them. He 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 does. It's considered as if he did the shechita because he starts it. Somebody else finishes it. Somebody else. I know, it. but he, but he but but he can't take, for him to come cobble the blood. He can't finish the shechita. He has he has another coin do it for him. That's what it said here. This is a that's, that's, correct. that's correct. But he starts the Shita. Starts the Shita. The Gemara will tell us. I understand. The Gemara will tell us the reason why another coin finishes it. So let, let, let's okay. wait. Okay. The, 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 okay. We'll see what the, the Kabbalah has to be done by the coin God. Right. Yeah. yeah, Rashi says. He has to quickly be Makabel, and therefore it's easy for him when somebody else finishes the Shechita. That's what Rashi said. Okay. Right. Okay. 
then he comes back outside and and all of the limbs of the Ola had to be put onto the grill on the Mizbeach. Then he has to offer the Minchas Chavitin, which the Kohen Gadol did every day. They had to pour the Yayin. And the Mishnah says, The Toires was done in between the Zrika Saddam and putting the Evorim on the Mizbeach. That was different than the afternoon Ktoiris. Shall Ben Arbay and Ben Evorim on the Sochi. In the afternoon, the Ktoiris was burned. After they put the limbs up, then they went to be mocked to the Torah and then they went to pour the wine for the Nesachi. So that's an important difference between the Torah in the morning and the Torah in the afternoon. If the Kohen Gadol was old or finicky, like sickly, and therefore going into a cold mikvah would be difficult for him. They could warm up some water from Erev Yom Kippur. And they would put it in the, I guess, the walls of the mikvah, not in the mikvah, because that could be Maim Shuvim problem. But they would warm it up. Our mission is not like Rav Meir. Ibrab Meir, even to Omar Tre Kidushi Alavisha Ovid Luhu, every time Rab Meir holds that a person is puts on clothing, he put he does a Kidush Yadaim before he wears it, and he puts it, he put he does a second one after he puts it on. Because Hachanami Levi Tre Kidushi Alavisha, because you see in our Mishnah. Didn't have him doing, didn't have him wash his hands before and after. He only washed it after. Really, there's no machlok. Both Rabbon and Rav Meir hold that when you take off the clothing that you're wearing, you wash your hands, and then you put it on, you wash your hands. So why here in our Mishnah, is there no washing your hands prior to taking, you know, after he took his clothing off? It just, so, Poshat Verochatz, Verochatz Velovish. Rav Meir Sarvim Makish Pshita Lulavisha. He makes a heckish between the taking off and the wearing. Malavisha Loivish Vachakach Makadesh. You wash your hands after you put on the clothing. Af Pshita Poshat Vachakach Makadesh. Rav Meir has, you take off. The clothing and before you dress, you do a washing. For a modern survey, no, makish pshita lavisha. We op, we 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 do make a hekish, but we learn it differently. Ma lavisha, kishu lavush makadesh. When does he wash his hands and feet? When he's already dressed. Af pshita kishu lavush makadesh. He washes his hands while he's still dressed before he takes off his clothing. So that's the point of machlok. I'm the rabbi Rav can you save it? Fatanya. Parsu Sarin shall boy to Benil Venab. They they had a sheet covering the coin goddle between him and the people. And then it says Poshat. He, he took his clothing off. The Yarad Vitovo. He went into the mikvah, came came up, all of an istap. Then they brought him the it's golden the clothing. He would he put it on. The the it on. So Rab Meir Oimer Parshat, he took off his original uh -huh. clothing, the Kiddush out of Ragla. And he washed his hand. The yard with Tovel Olav and Nistab. Then he dried it. And then Ibilo because of the Lovash with Kiddush out of Ragla. So Rab Meir, that's how Rab Meir would learn. Amrlui Tanya Tanya. You know what? If you have a Baraisa that says like that, then then I can't argue with it. So Bishom Rav Meir who hired the Mishkachas law, as for Kiddushin. So if you if he has to change clothing five times, 
So that's why there's 10 Kiddush Yadayim Raglayim. A corner of mayor, there's two for each one. When he takes off the clothing, we'll put on the clothing. So two times five is 10. El Rabbonon Tishahavu, right? According to the way the Rabbonon learned, the first pshita didn't require Kiddush Yadayim Raglayim. Arlach Rabbonon Kiddusha Basra. Yeah, but you make it up at the end. The last Kiddush, Ki Poshet Big Day Kodesh, Velovish Big Day Chol, Ovid Leasim. When he takes off, Finally, the big day Kodesh, he puts on his regular secular clothing, then he washes his hands for the last. And according to Rav Meir, he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't wash then, he would only wash in, in, in the beginning. Okay. Any oh, yeah. questions, questions, comments?